Real people, real breakthroughs. This is the Psychology of Eating podcast, where psychology and nutrition meet to uncover the true causes of our unwanted eating concerns. Your relationship with food will never be the same. Now, here's your host, eating psychology expert and founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, Mark David. Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, and here we are back in the Psychology of Eating podcast. And I am here today with Lee. Welcome, Lee. Hi, Mark. Good to be back. I'm glad you're back. And for those of you new to the podcast, here's how it works. So Lee and I had a session probably about six months ago now. And that was our first session, our only session. And this is just a follow-up to kind of check in and see, okay, anything useful, anything interesting to report. So why don't you just fill in listeners and viewers on just kind of the key things that you had wanted to work on and fill us in what's been happening. Give us a weather report. Okay. Well, it's been uh, it's been an interesting six months. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say um, I think pr- probably the... Uh, the main thing that we talked about working on then was uh, sort of uh, taking control and responsibility for uh, myself being in charge of uh, what's going on. And that, that's been a mixed uh, success with that. Um, I've learned a lot of things in the process of uh, trying to pay attention to that. And uh, uh, honestly, the first thing when I got the email that uh, – to do the follow-up is like, oh my God, I've not made nearly enough progress. I needed to do a whole lot more in six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things like, but, you know, then I'm like, well, you know, I have done stuff. Um, and, you know, and then what, what would have been enough or good enough? I, I, when I, I think back, I'm like, I wouldn't even actually know how to say, oh, if I had done this many things, you know, I would have been ready for this, you know, mm-hmm. to, to have the follow up. So, uh, so it is, you know, I am where I am and, um, uh, and so, um, the, um, one of the things I guess in that sort of becoming more comfortable with myself, uh, is that I found that I've slowed down a lot in a lot of different ways. Uh, not just eating, but even just uh, walking around. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of much more aware of how it feels to be walking around, what's going on, uh, how quickly I respond to people when things are going on. Uh, I don't, you know, I have to jump in real quick and do stuff. Uh, I can kind of take my time, think about what I'm going to say, what I'm feeling, and why I'm feeling it, and then answer. That's a lot of. Uh, new exes, I guess, of sticking with uh, my my own integrity and really saying what is right and true and honest uh, for me, and other people don't necessarily have to agree with it or like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I'll, I'll say it, and they can uh, have their own reactions to it. Mm-hmm. And so that that's been uh, interesting. Uh, it's been empowering and it's been interesting in the ways that places where I found that I've like held back and not done things sort of either to protect myself or to protect, feeling like, Oh, I'm going to protect somebody else from how I feel about this. And it turns out that that's not really that helpful. Uh, people actually need to hear my honest opinion about things, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of, I don't know why that's a surprise, but it was. Mm. Um, so that was kind of a big, uh, a big thing. I think one of the bigger surprises in sort of continuing to listen to these stories um, has been um, sort of how mistrustful some parts of me are about the process of. Of, or you know the idea of again you know changing the way I eat and uh, you know changing my my body. Uh, in fact, I've, I've you know I talked before about a time when it you know I had been suicidal, and I know some of the fears from that. But there's something else there that I haven't been able to pick apart yet. 
there's a real fear inside me somewhere that says it's not safe to be small. And mm-hmm. I don't quite understand that part yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm continuing to uh, listen to the stories and learn from them and uh, going along, you know, making some changes here and there, changed schools and majors. Uh, that was kind of a big step. So I'll be starting with a new school and uh, uh, and a new whole new line of education, I guess, in the fall, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, feels really, really good. It's been an interest for a long time, and I didn't really appreciate it to give myself space to express that. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how the topic in the activity called weight loss and kind of learning to be with my body and love my body in a whole new way, isn't it interesting how it invariably, if we're staying awake at the wheel, leads us to all these other places, you know, leads us to, oh, people need to hear my opinion. Oh, I need to show up and be the real me. Um, we don't always think of that as part of the weight loss equation or, or, you know, finding the right body, like where's this body supposed to be at? I really feel that the more we become who we're supposed to be, the more the body can become what it's supposed to be. It's like we come mm-hmm. first, like, like what's inside my soul, my heart, my being, that's first and foremost. The body's going to change. It always changes. It, it's born. It's tiny. It gets older. It morphs. It does this. It does that. It gets old and it dies. And all the whole time, we're inside somehow witnessing this whole experience. And how can mm-hmm. we have a good experience of it? So I'm, I'm super pleased for you that you're, that you're doing the work on self. Because as you were talking, I was thinking I have met so, 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 so many people that when they step into the process called weight loss, everything gets focused on weight, 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 attack the fat, attack the weight. And weight loss can almost become a substitute for personal development. Meaning we end up focusing on the pounds and not focusing on, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? (laughs) How do I be right. more of the real me? So it feels like you're kind of squarely on the road, you know, in terms of and yeah. it feels like you've 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 been on that road a while. It's just a question of making the adjustments and really focusing on like some of the key places in life where you need to work. I, I, I mean, how does that all resonate for you? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's very true. And you know, one of the things I've kind of come to realize is that it's very difficult for me to prioritize myself. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like you know, everything else has to be uh, perfect, and you have to take care of everybody else and get everything else done. And then if there's any little bits of stuff left over. Maybe I can pay attention to myself or make time to do stuff you know that's uh you know helpful for me, yes, so you know so I'm still struggling with the you know grabbing meals quickly and things like that and mm-hmm. uh you know and it's just a lot of that is uh I know is you know it's prioritizing time and and things like that, but it's it's a real um struggle i guess or a challenge for me to you know i guess parts in somewhere don't feel like they're important enough or they're not as important as everything else mhm well you know i think in your heart of hearts you know that that's not true i want to say something about that um i've noticed with a lot of people who have had a lifelong or a long-term kind of dance with trying to lose weight, that it's easy for people oftentimes to, as a as an apology for being fat, we become people pleasers. 
So we're basically mm -hmm. saying to the world, I'm sorry. How can I put you first? Because clearly I don't deserve anything because I'm fat. Um, so let me put you first. And you first, and you first, and let me apologize, and let me be really nice, and let me be the good little fat kid or fat person, so then you like me, and you're not going to judge me for being fat. So I don't know if that applies to you, but I'm just raising my hand and saying that we all need to check ourselves and see if there's a place where we're operating as if we need to apologize for who we are, because if for any reason, mm -hmm. because clearly if we're attacking our body fat and attacking our weight and hating what we are and who we look at, then we're going to assume other people are looking at us in the same way we are. We will tend to treat mm -hmm. other people the way we treat ourselves. We will tend to think other people see us the way we see us. So... If other people are judging you the same way you judge you, then, whoa, you better be super nice to them. There's the coping mm -hmm. strategy, which my guess is if you do that, you learn that puppy at a young age. You know, that's a, that's a survival piece, which, if I may say, you said before, you know, I, I, I had this thought that, you know, wow, it's not safe to be small when it comes to weight loss. You know, and, and you said, I don't, I don't know where that comes from or I haven't figured that out yet. Let's figure that out really easy. I'll tell you where it comes from. <laughs> it comes okay. from it comes from the truth. It is not safe to be small and tiny. Um, you look at a little infant, they ain't safe. Um, you leave them out on the street, you know, some wild animal is going to come and find them or they're going to die of exposure to the elements. Little things aren't safe until they learn how to be safe. Little things are easily eaten by bigger things. Um, mm -hmm. So in nature, the little creatures are always getting protected by their mamas and their papas um, until we are safer. Every small human knows, every kid knows that they are dependent on an adult to feel safe. You are dependent on the bigger people. So it makes sense that you come to the conclusion, I ain't going to be safe being small. Um, cause on a certain level, it has an evolutionary truth to it. Um, at this stage of the game though, it's a falsehood because right. you're adult enough and smart enough and you know the ways of the world where if you weigh 20 pounds less or 79 pounds less or whatever the heck it is, technically you're still safe. You know how to drive a car. Right. You know how to use your cell phone. You know how to get help. Um, mm -hmm. Part of that is catching up to adult time. Right. I'm going to guess. Yeah, one that of the things I've been asking as my as, as these little stories come up and things is, you know, is is okay. Is, was that really true then? Uh, sometimes it was. Sometimes it wasn't. Um, and then the next thing I try to ask is, is it still true now? Mm -hmm. And very often it's, well, no, you know, it may have been very, very true, you know, 50 years ago or whatever. But when the, you know, then I stop and say, well, what about right now? And then it's like, well, no, it's not true now. And it starts to kind of reframe that and help me realize, okay, I, that isn't something that I have to can keep doing, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, Lee, here's what I think for you. And I really mean this. I think that you're so, 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 so close to having what you want. Like so close. And what I mean is there's a part of you that just has to get that you don't have to apologize for anything. You don't have to be anybody different to deserve whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be anybody different. You don't even have to figure anything out. All you have to do is proceed as if, you know something, I ain't perfect. I'm a human being. I got my challenges that I deal with, like other people have their challenges that I'm dealing with. And I can feel good about myself to a great degree while I'm working on myself. I think there's, mm -hmm. a, there, there's a place in you where you might feel like you need to figure something out. 
to really start to relax into yourself and take care of yourself better. And there's really nothing to figure out in everything. So yeah, there's always little bits and pieces that are going to enlighten us and enliven us. There's no doubt about that. But it feels like at this stage of the game, it's about you simply putting into practice self-love, self-care, self-nourishment, period, and showing up as you and learning at the ripe old age of whatever you are or the ripe young age of whatever you are is just learning, you know, something. If you be the real you and people don't like you, who cares? Cross them off your list. (laughs) And the ones that want to hear your opinion, the ones that are still going to like you, they stay on your list. Those are the people you want in your world. Um, I, I, I really think it's as much as that. And as you begin to see that I'm safe, even if people don't like me, I'm safe. There will be people who hate you and you're still safe. And size then becomes less important in terms of needing it for safety. Those are just some thoughts. Right. How does that land for you? Yeah, that that sounds... uh, uh, um... Some of that was actually the, the sort of internal talk I was having kind of leading into this interview. Yeah, as I said, well, you know, I was, because I was saying, I'm like, well, what's Mark going to think? Without, you know, and I'm like, honestly, why do I care what Mark thinks? Mm-hmm. I mean, I like all your, your stuff and stuff like that. But if you just have that, it's like, I don't like what Lee's doing and whatever. It's like, you know, the sun still rises tomorrow. I go to work. It doesn't really throw my world you know, and stuff. So it's like, and, you know, and then the uh, thing about kind of letting other people actually see me and see and finding out that their reactions are different than what I expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's it's kind of like I'm, you know, like you were saying about um, if other people judge me the way I do and then finding out that, hey, they don't. Um, and... Um, so I kind of forgot where I was going with that, but it's, you know, I guess, I, I guess as, as I let people actually see me, I see what, I see what, how they actually see me, you know, I get that feedback from them and realize that it's not the way I imagined mm. that they would see me. Mm. Kind of like my, my internal perception of myself is different than other people's when they actually do see me. Yeah. And I think the the gold here is that when you say, when I let other people see me, which is another way of saying intimacy, like letting people a little bit closer in, like being the real you, like when we're intimate with somebody, there's a closeness, there's a discovery, there's a revealing. Okay, There's my normal mask that I wear for the world, you know, and then when I get more intimate, there's, here's me being real. Here's me being honest. Here's me sharing with you, like, kind of what I'm really thinking and feeling right now. So that's intimate. And that's a risk. Intimacy is a big risk because people might not like us when we, when we kind of reveal ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think weight loss and dieting and food often becomes a distraction from intimacy. Meaning, intimacy is the real healer here. Like intimacy is what's connecting you and helping you have revelations. And usually that's what people want. Usually when, when people are trying to lose weight and feel better or change their eating habits and feel better about themselves, or gain weight and feel better, or gain muscle and feel better. Really what they want is we want to be able to have a better experience of ourselves and a better experience with other people, which generally means a kind of intimacy. Right. So all I'm saying is I think you're on the right track. And, and, and I, I think if you highlight the word intimacy... And notice when you kind of give it permission more, mm-hmm. good things are going to happen. Information, like just good things are going to happen. You're going you're gonna to learn about yourself. You're going to learn about the people in your environment. And 
you're going to embody more because the more we're intimate, the more we're in the body, I think by definition. Right. So, so where would you like to be a year from now? Oh, um, a year from now, I, I think I would just like to be, uh, you know, I guess where I started at the beginning of, you know, just being more comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that's also, that's sort of all the layers of me, you know, the, you know, the physical part, um, you know, the bulkiness that gets in the way, but then also just that, you know, not feeling like I got to be something different for other people. Um, I don't have to, uh, um, the, uh, actually one of the things that came up was, uh, sort of feeling like Pinocchio, you know, trying to figure out how to be a real boy. Um, and it's like, well, what do you have to do to be real? Mm -hmm. You know, how, what, you know, how much do you have to do to earn the right to be real? Mm -hmm. And, um, so learning that I'm already real. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, still, you know, part of me gets that some parts are still, you know, skeptical. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, catch it on. You know? Yeah. That's real honest. And, and I, and if you can hold those two, hold those two, meaning, yeah, there's a part of me that totally gets it. And I don't have to wait for anything to be more real. And there's another part of me that's a little skeptical about it and thinks I have to be somebody else or do something. So, so if you can understand, sure, those two parts of me are, are there and they're present and they're active. The part of you that's skeptical and doesn't believe, it doesn't need to be eradicated. Right. That's super important. It doesn't need to be eradicated for you to move forward. That other part simply needs a little bit of airtime, needs you to listen to it, and it needs you to go, okay, I hear you, and I get it, and I could see why you'd be skeptical, and I could see why you'd have your foot on the brakes, and it's not how we're going to do business today, because you know something? It's a different world now. I'm an adult. Yeah. I'm making changes, and that's really kind of like the little kid in you that you have to take by the hand and bring him along. So in a lot of ways, yeah. it's you just learning how to be an adult for yourself. It's you learning how to be a good parent to yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that taking, uh, kind of taking my own hand and saying, okay, I understand that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, but, you know, come along with me and let me show you this, you know, show you how, how this is really, you know. Yeah. And like you say, you don't have to get rid of it, but you can bring it along. Yeah. We're always looking for perfection, I think. You know, we, we always just want to stamp out all the negativity or stamp out all the imperfections. And no, you know, you just, you just bring them along for the ride because they're going to come along anyways. And I, right. you know, I think this is just about us being human and being real and giving our imperfections, our beautiful imperfections, just giving them a place to live and giving them a voice and not letting them run the show. Right. Yeah, there there will always be a uh, – um, there will never be a perfect time. So you may as well just start doing something now. Amen even to if that. It's, even if you can't do everything. Mm -hmm. you know, even if you can't do everything, do something, a little bit, a step, you know. I think you're in a good place, my friend. Yeah, it it feels really good, you know, and um, it's you know going a little differently than I might have imagined back in January when we talked. But mm -hmm. uh, it's you know it's moving. There's things happening, mm -hmm. and that's that's good. Good for you. I I really appreciate your efforts. I appreciate you getting on this call and being real and being honest. And, you know, I think it's all about just keep standing by yourself. Keep standing by yourself. Stand by yourself. You don't abandon yourself. You don't self-attack. 
when we can be our best friend and stand by ourselves, especially when it comes to all the food and body kind of craziness and nonsense that we can go through, when we learn to be a good friend to self, woo, nice things happen. Um, and I see you doing that. And, and I see good things happening for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you feel like we can put a nice bow on this conversation right now? Yeah, I think we can, uh, uh, you know, wrap it up for uh, for this, and I'm just gonna, you know, keep taking those steps and doing something, and uh, we'll see where it lands me in the future. Good for you, Lee. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in once again. I'm Mark David on behalf of the Psychology of Eating podcast. I've been speaking with Lee. Lots more to come, my friends. You take care. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for listening to the Psychology of Eating podcast. To learn more about the breakthrough body of work we teach here at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, please sign up for our free video series at ipe.tips. That's I for Institute, P for Psychology, E for Eating, tips, T-I-P-S. You'll learn about the cutting-edge principles of dynamic eating psychology and mind-body nutrition that have helped millions of people forever transform their relationship with food, body, and health.